In this video, we'll be discussing about the major accessory proteins of actin cytoskeleton, aka actin binding proteins, and their functions. Here in this diagram, you can see the simple structure of actin filaments having minus and plus and denoted by the symbols. The actin filament is made up of small structural subunits called the actin subunits, shown in the diagram. Now let's get to the first accessory protein, which is the profilin. This profilin protein takes in the actin subunits and adds them to the plus end of actin filament. So profilin speeds up the actin elongation by adding actin subunits towards the plus end, thus growing the actin filament. Then we have thymosin. This thymosin also binds the actin subunits. It binds towards the actin ATP monomers. But this protein prevents polymerization of actin subunits. So we can say this thymosin is the inhibitory protein for growing actin filament. Third accessory protein is the cofilin. This cofilin binds to the actin ADP subunits and promotes the disassembly of actin filament. Cofilin family includes few other proteins also like ADF, actin depolymerizing filament and dipactin. Then there is formin protein. It nucleates assembly and remains associated with the growing plus end. Formin generates unbranched filaments to initiate the nucleation, which happens to be the crucial step in actin filament formation. Furthermore, there is another nucleating protein, which is the ARP complex, actin-related protein. This ARP complex, just like formin, also nucleates the assembly, but this protein remains associated with minus end. Here in this diagram, you can see the ARP complex forms a web-like structure, a three-dimensional structure of actin filaments. Then we have tropomycin, which binds along the sides of filament and stabilizes the actin filament. Next is the capping protein, which caps the plus end of actin filament, and it prevents both assembly as well as disassembly of actin filament. These capping proteins regulate the length of actin filament. And then we have gelsolin. It severs the filament and binds to the plus end of filament as shown in the diagram. So we can say gelsolin breaks the filament into two or multiple parts. So these are the important actin binding proteins. Now there are also cross-linking proteins for actin filaments. First we have fimbrin protein, which has a globular shape. In this diagram we can see the actin filament and these are the fimbrin proteins in between the filaments linking them together. So fimbrin protein promotes the bundling of actin filaments into tightly knit parallel arrays, as shown in the diagram. Second cross-linking protein is the alpha actinin, which also holds the filaments the same way fimbrin holds, but the shape is more like dumbbell shape. And also alpha actinin loosely packs the filaments than fimbrin. Then we have flamin protein, as shown in the diagram. It has two actin binding sites with a V-shaped linkage between them so that it cross-links actin filaments into a network with the filaments oriented almost at right angles to one another. So this forms a mesh-like network. Moreover, there are membrane binding proteins also like spectrin. It attaches the filament to the cell membrane on its cytosolic phase. This spectrin protein forms a mesh-like network of filaments on membrane, as shown in the diagram. And next membrane binding protein is the ERM, which is isrin, radexin and myosin, named after the first three members of ERM family. The ERM binds the actin filaments to the transmembrane glycoproteins of cell membrane, thus aiding in signaling and in endocytosis and exocytosis. So these are the major accessory proteins involved in the actin cytoskeleton system. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Do consider supporting my work on Patreon and also make sure to subscribe this channel. Thanks.